Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone. In this video we are going to be looking at a method which is called factor analysis. So factor analysis is not really a hypothesis testing technique because we're not trying to use it to say things about the population. Uh, more of an exploratory technique where we're looking at our data and looking at some patterns in our data. It's also a data reduction technique. So data reduction is where we may have a large number of variables and we're trying to reduce and combine them into a smaller set of variables. In particular we use these with multi-item scales. With our multi-item scale, uh, if you recall that I've told you that particularly with some of the psychology scales, there may be 20 or 30 or sometimes even more items. And being able to analyze and interpret, explain every single one of these, it's going to be very time consuming. What we might find is that it's in fact more useful to us to see which of these scale items actually group together. So it might be that even though we have say 20 or 30 scale items, they actually group together into maybe two or three or four meaningful what we call factors, where each factor is measuring a particular thing. So here is an example of some very simple factor analysis output. And so you can see down the left hand side we have uh, some different categories and so these were actually some scale items. And so for each of these scale items uh, people were on a Likert scale uh, giving a level of importance for them. And then we have columns that are titled factor. So we've got factor 1, factor 2, factor 3. On the table we can, within the table we can see a whole lot of three digit decimal figures. So these numbers are what we call the loadings. So some of them we can see a blank and some have numbers in them. The most important ones are the ones that are greater than 0.3 or less than negative 0.3. So these are the ones that well, we say have the higher loadings. So instead of having these 10 scale items down the side, we're condensing this down so instead we can have three factors. Uh, and in a minute we'll look at what these factors actually mean. Uh, but for now what we want to focus on is which items have big scores in a particular factor. So ideally we want our model to have what we call simple structure. So simple structure means that uh, each variable say, or each, each item uh, has a strong loading, so greater than 0.3 or less than negative 0.3 on only one factor. Each factor has at least three variables loaded on it, so each factor has at least three high scoring variables on it and it only and each factor has some sort of identifiable underlying meaning. So when we look at the different items that are loaded onto a particular factor, there's some sort of common theme. When this happens, this is one of the real powers of factor analysis, is that we can then start talking about that factor and the meaning of that factor rather than talking about the items individually. So this one that I showed you before, it definitely does look like it has the simple structure. Uh, so our data, when we describe our data using three factors instead of 10 items, 71% uh, of our variation is explained, and that's a figure that the software tells us about. We can see that each factor has at least three items with high scores, and we can see that each item only has high scores on one factor. So it means that it has simple structure and so now instead of talking about these 10 different items uh, it's going to be a lot easier for us to talk about the three factors instead. And so if we have a look at each of these factors, the first one, see the highlighted ones here, airports, shipping, buses, trains. So all of these seem to be about transportation. 
factor two, we've got water, electricity, and gas. So all of these seem to be some sort of infrastructure. And this bottom one, internet, telephones, postal service, these three seem to be all related to communication. So each factor seems to have a very common theme running through it. So we know that the original scales were looking uh, at uh, attitude, and in fact, in particular, it was actually attitude to government ownership. And so we've got transport, utilities or infrastructure, and communication. So now we can talk about these three things instead of having to talk about each of the 10 components individually. When we're writing uh, reports, and particularly when we're writing recommendations, it is important that we use the names of the factors. We don't just talk about factor one and factor two and factor three. So we would talk about attitude to government ownership of transport infrastructure, attitude of government ownership of utilities, attitude of government ownership of communication. So we would make sure we're using the full names. We didn't just talk about factor one, factor two, factor three. This has been a Swinburne production.